Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we'll be learning English through short stories. So, let's start the video. The first story is The Wish Granting Tree. In a far off land, there was a great tree that was said to have the power to grant wishes. The tree was ancient and wise, and it was said that if one could climb to the top of the tree and whisper their wish into its branches, it would come true. Many people from all over the land came to the tree to make their wishes, but only a select few were chosen to have their wishes granted. One day, a young girl named Sophie decided to make the journey to the wish-granting tree. She had heard of the tree's power and knew that she had to try her luck. Sophie set out early in the morning and walked for days until she finally reached the base of the tree. The tree was so tall that Sophie could not see the top, but she knew that she had to try. She started climbing and after hours of climbing, she finally reached the top. She looked around and saw that the tree was surrounded by a beautiful garden with a small pond and a waterfall. Sophie approached the tree and whispered her wish into its branches. She wished for a way to help the poor and the suffering in her village. The tree rustled in response, and a small seed fell into Sophie's hand. Sophie was confused, but she knew that the tree had granted her wish in its own way. She climbed down the tree and went back to her village. When she arrived, she planted the seed, and to her surprise, it grew into a beautiful apple tree. Sophie harvested the apples and sold them in the village market. She used the money to buy food and clothes for the poor and to build a small school for the children. The apple tree became famous for its delicious fruits and soon people from all over the land came to Sophie's village to buy the apples. Sophie's village prospered and the people were happy. Sophie was happy too, knowing that her wish had come true, and that the wish-granting tree had given her the power to help others. Story number two. The Time Traveler. Once upon a time, there was a brilliant scientist named Dr. John who devoted his life to research in the field of time travel. He had always been fascinated by the idea of being able to go back in time and change the course of history. After years of hard work, Dr. John finally succeeded in building a time machine. He tested it on himself and found that it worked perfectly. Excited by his success, he decided to travel back in time to the 1920s, to the era of the great jazz musicians. When he arrived, he found himself in the middle of the jazz scene in New Orleans. He quickly became friends with many of the musicians and began to play with them in the local clubs. He was amazed by the energy and creativity of the musicians and was inspired to become a jazz musician himself. Dr. John spent several years in the 1920s playing with the greats and honing his skills. He even recorded an album under the pseudonym Johnny Time which became a hit among jazz enthusiasts. But as much as Dr. John enjoyed his time in the past, he knew that he had to return to his own time. So, he set the time machine for the present day and traveled back home. When he returned, he found that he had been gone for several years, but that his research had been continued by his colleagues, who had built a new and improved time machine. Dr. John was thrilled to see that his research had led to greater advancements, but he couldn't shake off the longing for the jazz era. So, he decided to use the new time machine to travel back to the 1920s whenever he could, and to continue to play the music he loved, always returning to the present before anyone could notice he was missing. He lived a double life, as a renowned scientist and a respected jazz musician in the past. Dr. John's secret was safe, and he lived a fulfilling life, always traveling back in time to play the music that he loved, never getting enough of the jazz era. Next story is Story number 3 The Secret Garden Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Mary who lived in a grand but gloomy old house with her widowed father and a handful of servants. 
Mary was a lonely child, with no friends her age or any playmates. She spent most of her days wandering the halls of the house and the vast gardens surrounding it. One day, as she was exploring the garden, she stumbled upon a hidden door behind a thicket of bushes. She pushed it open and found herself in a secret garden. The garden was overgrown and wild, but it was also beautiful. Mary spent all her free time in the secret garden, tending to the flowers and exploring the winding paths. She even found a small pond with a little boat in it where she would row around and imagine herself sailing to faraway lands. As time passed, Mary began to transform the garden with the help of her father's head gardener. They cleared the paths and planted all sorts of flowers and trees, and Mary even built a small greenhouse where she could grow her own plants. The secret garden became Mary's sanctuary, and she spent many happy hours there. And as she grew older, she began to invite her friends to the garden, and they would have picnics and tea parties among the flowers. Years later, when Mary's father passed away, she inherited the house and the garden. And she decided to open the garden to the public so that others could enjoy it as she had. The secret garden became a beloved spot in the community, and people came from all over to see the beautiful flowers and the serene pond. And Mary, who had once been so lonely, was now surrounded by friends, and the garden had become her legacy. Story number four. The Ghost of the Lighthouse. There was a small coastal town where a lighthouse stood tall on the cliff, guiding ships safely to the shore. But the lighthouse had a dark history, and the locals avoided it, as they believed it to be haunted by the ghost of the former lighthouse keeper, who had died in a tragic accident many years ago. One day, a young man named David, who had just moved to the town, heard the stories about the haunted lighthouse and became determined to uncover the truth. He was a curious and brave person, and he decided to investigate the lighthouse himself. David spent many nights at the lighthouse, trying to communicate with the ghost, but he never saw or heard anything out of the ordinary. But one night, as he was about to give up, he heard a faint voice calling his name. He followed the voice and found an old diary hidden in a corner of the lighthouse. The diary belonged to the former lighthouse keeper, and it revealed that he had not died in an accident, but had taken his own life, overwhelmed by the guilt of causing a shipwreck that had claimed many lives. The lighthouse keeper's ghost had been trapped in the lighthouse, unable to find peace, until David found the diary and finally learned the truth. David shared the story with the townspeople, and they held a memorial for the lighthouse keeper and the victims of the shipwreck. The ghost of the lighthouse keeper was finally able to find peace and his ghost was no longer seen. David became known as the hero of the town and the lighthouse was no longer avoided but rather became a place of remembrance and a tourist attraction. David continued to work with the community to preserve the lighthouse and its history, and it remains an important part of the town's culture. The Last Story Story Number 5 The Magic Crystal In a far-off kingdom, there was a powerful sorceress named Selina who lived in a grand castle on top of a mountain. Selina was feared and respected by all, for she possessed a magic crystal that granted her immense power and the ability to control the elements. But Selina was not content with her power, and she became increasingly obsessed with finding a way to make the crystal even more powerful. She spent all her time experimenting with different spells and incantations, but nothing seemed to work. One day, as she was wandering through the forest, she came across a wise old wizard who offered to help her. The wizard told Selina that the crystal's power could only be increased by finding and merging with a second crystal, hidden deep within the earth. Selina was skeptical but decided to give it a try. She set out on a journey to find the second crystal, facing many challenges and overcoming many obstacles along the way. After many months of searching, she finally found the second crystal, hidden in a cave deep within a mountain. Selina merged the two crystals together and her power increased tenfold. 
she was now able to control the elements with even greater ease and precision. But as she was experimenting with her new powers, she began to notice that her actions were causing destruction and harm to the kingdom. With the help of the old wizard, Selina realized that true power comes with responsibility and that she must use her powers for the good of the kingdom and its people. She became a protector of the kingdom and used her powers to help the people, rather than harm them. The people of the kingdom came to love and respect Selina, and her castle became a place of pilgrimage for those in need of help and protection. Selina lived a long and fulfilling life, using her powers for the greater good. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date with all my new videos.